Welcome back to another episode of Artist to Artist presented by Artist Public. I'm Nick and this is Christian and I'm coming to you live from the brand new Artist Public Studios. What's up? Okay, please remember, if you like this podcast, uh, we would super appreciate a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts. It helps us bring on awesome new guests, new knowledge, information, tips, tricks, and everything you need to know to grow your career. With that, Christian, what's in the news today, my man? Well, here's a uh, collaboration that I never thought would happen. The Jonas Brothers and Marshmello just dropped a new song called uh, Leave Before You Love Me. Um, they debuted it at the uh, 2021 Billboard Music Awards, and apparently it's a bop. Um, that was uh, very interesting for me, though. You know, I, I wanted to lead the conversation into kind of collaborations and you know, things like that that are really unexpected. Um, you know, growing up, I never thought that I would see yeah. the Jonas Brothers on an EDM, a huge EDM artist's uh, song as a, as a feature. I mean, hey, collaborations are a huge part of the market today. With that, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Featured X, for being the collaboration marketplace of the future. Just kidding. It's not our sponsor. Um, if you know what Featured X is, you can check it out, FeaturedX.com. It is the largest marketplace for literally features and collabs um, where stuff like this happens. Trading genres, cross genres, anything from rap artists, to EDM artists, punk, pop, metal, deathcore, anything that you need. Featured X has, and it, it exactly correlates back though to this topic, which is there is a change in the market. Um, you know, as people have said, when records were coming out, features weren't a thing because it didn't matter. Um, you know, if you had an artist on your album, you were still getting put in the same area of the record store. Where now, when you have a feature, you're going to show up on that bigger famous artist page on Spotify. So now you can cross pollinate fan bases. And that's a huge piece of features. They are amazing for organically growing fan bases and getting your music out to new people. Um, and stuff like this is happening every day. You know, there's EDM artists collaborating with people from deathcore and punk pop and, you know, how many different genres is machine gun Kelly featured on, um, you know, and, and so it's, it's such an uh, interesting thing. I actually saw that um, ironically, I was digging through Marshmallow's life last night. Um, because I was just curious, if it, you know, it's come out yet that, you know, he's Chris com. if, you know, he's taken off his mask yet saying like, Hey, what's up? I'm dot com. Um, but I guess he hasn't yet. So that's why I was digging through and I saw that and I was like, yeah, that's a sick collaboration. And it just, you know, brings back the importance of collaborations and, you know, where the market is going and the market is going collaboratively. Definitely. Definitely. Well, so with that collaborations, let's have our collaboration of the day. We are bringing on special guest Mundo, who is an artist, producer, and influencer who has gathered a following on TikTok, passing advice and experiences to artists, to artists and audiences interested in navigating the music industry. On TikTok, Mundo shares lots of tips, tricks for music production, networking, and increasing productivity. His goal is to get audiences to critically think about themselves and orient themselves and their attention towards becoming better at making progress toward their goals. Mundo's own productions have a common eerie and kind of off-color brand and derive inspiration from an electronic music background. He is currently attending MTSU and studying audio production and is on track to graduate in May 2022, so he's still in college. With that, let's dive in and let's see what this is all about. So, Mundo, let's get started. Um, the way that I love to start these conversations off is just kind of by having you walk us through kind of your story, um, you know, how, how you got into the music industry and like how you got to where you're at today. Okay. I, I think it's almost a um, funny question. Cause it's like, well, when you start, I think there's almost multiple answers, you know, because, you know, I could start when I was like 12 trying to make dubstep in garage band, which you can imagine how that went, you know, it's like, uh, not too hot you know uh watching a lot of like music production videos just trying to like figure it out myself and then i was in high school still doing it my dad told me he was like you know yeah, my name's ray you know but it's my birth name he's like you know ray like I, I think this music thing is like what you really want to do i was like well why do you think that dad he was like well it's the only thing that i don't have to tell you to do it you just keep finding yourself doing it but um really starting to like take it serious and it's like all right i want to navigate and like advance in this industry I would say about a year ago, it was a, a change of circumstance for me. 
And I really sat down with myself and I was like, all right, how can I orientate myself so that I'm progressing towards my goals at the most productive rate that I can? Like, kind of like, I don't know. I think that's something uh, really important. I guess start talking about like uh, uh, my TikTok videos and stuff like that. I pass advice and like talk about similar things and have similar conversations. I think it's really important for small artists. If you really have high aspirations in this industry, it warrants uh, a crazy work ethic, you know, and becoming very precise with um, how you spend your time and really understanding your goals and sitting down with yourself and orientating yourself and it's like, all right, what do I want to do? Where do I want to get? And kind of looking at all the facets of your skill sets and your weaknesses. And this is kind of what I did like about a year ago or so. I'm like, okay, well, what do I want to do? Well, I want to build a brand with Mundo. You know, how do I do that? It's like, okay. So I make electronic music. I don't have a particular vocal talent. People want to hear words. I should probably get in touch with singers and rappers and people of that skill set, you know? And uh, like sitting down, analyze your skill set, figure out what types of people you might need around you and figuring out where to find them as well. And like, uh, oh shoot, lost my train of thought. I'm anxious on here. No, man, don't worry about it. It's uh, yeah, just, no a worries. just a conversation, man. Just mm -hmm. music people talking to music people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, sitting down with myself about a year ago, uh, I was like making electronic music like uh, here and there, you know, just kind of like a, a back burner type of thing. But I really decided that I wanted to do it. So um, I was like, OK, well, what artists are like succeeding and which are kind of like all blending in together? And I noticed the ones that blend in together to me didn't really have like a particular sound. They're just kind of like doing it here and there. But I, I wanted to like really take it serious. Like uh, when you think of like Kiss, you think of very specific imagery and a very specific sound. When you think of Marshmallow, you think of very specific imagery and like a specific sonic to like his work. And I was like, all right, well, let me start to define that. So I, I figured that out. And then um, figuring out like visual stuff like that, I started to build like um, what's looking like Mundo now with kind of like the eeriness and almost like a, a playful off color-ish in like a kind of like dark EDM type of thing. Going off of kind of like the stuff you were saying, I think bringing back to it kind of like loops in with Artist Public, which is like what you were saying, like know what you need to do and like figure out where your like strong points are and your weak points are. And then like find where other people in the industry fit in it. Um, and I don't think a lot of people have found that. Um, I think people are scared to outsource. I've noticed yeah. that with artists that I interact with is like, there's like a strange pride in, well, I do everything myself, you know, it was like, well, you actually might be putting yourself at quite a disadvantage with that, you know, because like, well, here you are, like you, you write your songs, you produce them, you try to mix them you do, and then master them. First of all, also, you know, good luck trying to like mix your own stuff because you, you know, after hearing it like uh, over and over and over and over, and then you just get so used to, it's kind of like a demo itis, but like a progressive demo itis because you're hearing it constantly. And it's just like, I don't know. I'm a yeah. big advocate for uh, outsourcing like a mix engineer. Not only that, you know, then, you know, social media presence and trying to market your stuff and X, Y, Z, like it's a lot to be doing by yourself. And I, I think um, there's no shame in having people around you, like helping you do things. And in fact, I, I think there's just like more advantage in it than anything. Yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I think I can say it from the, the business side of things. It's like when you create something, it's your baby. Like artist bubble is my baby. Every song you create is your baby. Mm -hmm. And like the last thing you want to do is go give it to someone else. But at the same time, mm -hmm. like you also have to remember, like you could be the worst person to take care of your baby. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like, yeah, at the end of the day, like, you, like, yeah, you love it to death, but like, you can also be the one to kill it. Like you got to mm -hmm. outsource it. Like people send their kids to school because they ain't the right. best to teach them. You know, like that's, that's the same thing in mm -hmm. everything else in life. Like sometimes when you're too close to something, is when you're actually more detrimental to it than you are giving it to someone else. Um, and yeah, you know, it's, it's a big thing. I know, I know for me and ours, but I don't code this thing. I'm not a developer, it's, you know? It's a weird, unique thing to the music industry too, because how many movies have you seen with one name on the credits? You know what I mean? Like, they're, like look at the credits. There's millions of names, millions of people, or not millions, you know what I mean? But, you know, plenty yeah. of people put a lot of work into this film, you know, and like, um, I'm sure you, you know if you look at a Bruno Mars song, how many people were on the writing alone? Yeah, you know, how many people were on the production or X Y Z? Like, look at the credits on a Bruno Mars song. It was, it's not just him. You know, 
I think if you're a small artist, you should um, consider taking your own work the same way. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. people have to remember that at the end of the day, it's a business, it's a product. And, you know, you, you wouldn't do anything else by yourself. You know, you definitely need help to get to the next step. Right. And, yeah. But at the same time, going back to like what you mentioned, all like garage band, there's always a starting point. Like, no, garage band may have not been the best place to make dubstep. But you started there and you got your basics. And so many people, I think, don't let themselves start because they think they need the high tech software to start. Oh, I can't produce music out of a recording studio. Um, or, you know, I can't do this. I can't do that. Well, download an app on your phone and just screw around with it start just just try it and start and start with the basics and then slowly add more get more confidence get more stuff because then when you have the recording studio you're going to know what to do with it but you don't want to be in a million dollar recording studio and be at the level of someone who's just figuring out what right, you know, yeah the, the fader buttons do mm -hmm. Yeah, I just had a conversation with an artist, actually, and he was saying, well, you know, Mundo, like, I, I think I want to do this music thing, but I just feel like I'm not, like, good enough yet. And what I told him was, I was like, all right, well, you could just, like, not do it. And it's like, okay, but what if for, you know, two or three months, you just, like, made it your life for a minute? Like, what if you just, like, put all of your energy into it for just, like, a short period of time and just saw what happened? You know what I mean? Like, really orientating it like in your schedule too and it's just like you're not gonna get nowhere in a you know if you really put all your energy into something the odds that you get zero out of it is so slim you know and yeah. if you really feel like you know well i'm just not very good yet like well just try putting all your energy into it for like three months uh you know reasonably you know if you got to work a job or you know sleep humans need sleep you know but just really put all your energy into it for like three months and see where you get and like if you're still not happy or maybe like you, you don't have a love for it maybe you could you know run and do something else or maybe you know um, who am i to know but i think the progress may be surprising exciting i think it will encourage you to continue pushing on with it and then that's how you improve you know that's how you i kind agree of with that i agree 100 and christian before i bounce it off to you to kind of go into that mm -hmm. a little bit more um quick pause imagine if humans didn't have to sleep Imagine how productive we would be. What would you do with your time? I would sit in this office. <laughs> <laughs> I already live here enough. The only reason I leave is to go to sleep. <laughs> if I didn't have to sleep, ooh, artist public leaps and bounds ahead. Maybe that's what I'll do. I just won't sleep for like six months. We'll be good. We'll be yeah. good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you'd have so much time to do so much more stuff. Um, or focus on the things you want and get them quicker. Interesting. Now, Christian, I'm going to pass that off back to you on that insanely interesting sidebar. You know, I, I think this is a really interesting conversation. And it, I, I think there's a big misconception with artists in the industry, especially young artists who are just starting out. And that misconception is, you know, they think that they're going to drop one song that they made in their bedroom and it's going to shoot them into stardom. And unfortunately, that's really not how it works. Um, it, it may work for the Justin Biebers and the M&Ms of the world who, you know, do one thing and it shoots them to stardom. But in general, you know, the 99% of the music population, it doesn't go that way. You know, they work and they toil for years. And even Justin Bieber and Eminem did that. It's just the story that you hear about them makes it seem like it was like a one-time thing and they were who you know them as today. Um, so, you know, uh, Mundo, you, you say that you talk to a lot of artists and I'm sure you get that question a lot of like, how do I get to that level? You know, like what, what, is, what are some of the things that you kind of, I guess... Uh, talk to people about on that topic consistency and because think about it, if you really want it so bad why do you not incorporate in your life as often as you know well you probably eat lunch around the same time every day you probably eat dinner around the same time every day what if around the same time every day just like when you did those things you just had a dedicated time for getting closer to my music goals like whatever that happened to look like for you maybe you're in a position where well i need more songs like okay well for this hour block of my day uh i will write more songs or maybe you're in a position where it's like well i need 
I need to learn how to produce better. It's like, okay, well, what if you cut out an hour yeah, and you're like, all right, well, I'm going to watch these producers who know what they're doing, do it and learn from them. Or I'm going to watch XYZ tutorials or whatever, you know, the, the learning part, dedicating that time to the learning part and consistency in a sense of dedicating it into your day and incorporating it in your life, you know, and not making kind of making the mental move from it just being like a, a side thing like well I, I do this music thing to like now like you know I, i'm doing like this music thing you know and like incorporating it in your life and then that's how you'll progress towards because no, you can't guarantee what's gonna pop you know what i mean when you're talking about your aspiration of well i want to be post malone there's no telling what song is going to be huge you know what i mean the best you can do is be consistent and just work towards your goals at a steady rate and then whatever will pop will pop you know maybe you gather like a a cult following whatever like wh whatever happens with that will happen with that but the best you could do is just be consistent and incorporate it in your life like anything else definitely and you know i think you know coming from a creative content perspective is particularly on social media people always say consistency is key right it doesn't matter how many followers you have as long as you're consistently posting that's going to grow itself exponentially over time. Um, and I assume that's kind of what you've done for your TikTok, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, TikTok is a funny thing to me. Uh, well, actually, when I started, I had zero clue what I was doing. And I, I don't think that's something that I've said yet, but like, um, I was just at the point I was like, all right, well, I want to expose myself like uh, to, because TikTok is the best platform to put your face in front of strangers. And that was really my goal, you know? So when I first started, I was like, I'm going to do a bunch of different things and see what sticks. So I made some videos where I was like, watch me make this beat. Or I made a video, like, you know, <laughs> some like little goofy gimmick things that, you know, like, you know, taking them down there, like something stupid with like, with like my dog or something, you know what I mean? And then I made a video talking about Skrillex's workflow. And then that got a lot of traction. And I made another video where I passed advice on um, song, was it song structure? I think it was. And I noticed that the videos that the audience felt could immediately apply to themselves had always done better. So I was like, all right, well, let me provide value to people. And then that's kind of like getting the gear string of, oh, well, to be interesting to someone else, you need to provide them value in some way. You know what I mean? Even if it's like, you know, something like, you know, a funny video, because people like funny videos because people like to laugh. And if you think about it that way, the funny videos providing them value, you know? So going back to what I was saying before, you know, like I, that's how the advice videos kind of started for me was I, I just was looking to provide people value. And honestly, you know, uh, I'm 21 years old. Uh, I'm an audio production student at MTSU. Uh, I'm certainly no re recording engineer who's been in this industry for like 30 plus years, but I've just been studying the game and observant and passing on things as I learn them and passing on experiences as I have them or have hear of like secondhand experiences and stuff like that just to like provide value to people because you know I can afford to be in school and learn audio production and take classes on the music industry not everyone can afford to go to a university and study the music industry so it's just kind of like passing on that information I love that and it's mm -hmm. funny. It's funny that you mentioned providing value because that's a very, <laughs> it's a very common theme that runs through these podcasts is everyone is always saying provide value to someone else and then you'll get that value back in return. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I love that you're doing that. I think that's great. Um, where's MTSU, by the way? I, I've never, I haven't heard of that. Oh, Middle Tennessee State University. We're like 30 minutes south of Nashville. Got it. I heard the accent. I didn't know where the accent was from. Oh, oh actually, that. well, it's funny because everywhere I go, people tell me I talk funny. Because uh, when I first came to, I'm from New Jersey, and then I came down to Tennessee, okay. they're like, oh, you got a Jersey accent. I was like, well, I don't know, because all my boys in Jersey tell me I talk funny too. And then I go up to Jersey, and they're like, oh, you caught a Southern accent. I'm like, <laughs> I think I just got like a funny dialect that like people don't <laughs> really, I, I don't know where it comes from. That's funny. That's cool. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, I'm kind of going through your, your, your notes here. And I mean, a lot of the things that we're talking about definitely have to do with like music production, um, how that applies to other people. You talk about that a lot in your TikToks. And um, I think another, and a lot of, there's a lot of misconceptions in the music industry that people have. Um, and a lot of people tend to think, I mean, outside of the music industry too, but like the world is black and white, right? You know, you do, you have to do everything a particular way, a certain formula, and you'll get X result. 
Um, and that's not the case. You know, you talk about how you make these videos after you've done something or experienced something and gain that knowledge for yourself. And that's amazing. Um, it's, I think it's important for artists to see that from another perspective. Um, and so like, you know, TikTok is huge with people kind of like you giving these music production uh, tips and tricks. So how do you stand yourself out from the crowd? Uh, I like to get my audience to think about themselves because I mean, I, I can make a TikTok about how a compressor works, but there's 7 million videos on the internet of how a compressor works, you know, but I, I, tr I love to get my audience. And these are always the videos that do better too, uh, actually uh, side note, but uh, I, I really enjoy getting my audience to look at themselves as an artist or as a songwriter or, you know, wherever they are now and wherever they would like to be. And it's like, well, how can I maximize productivity to get there the fastest? Or how can, I, like, I, I love to get them to think about what they're doing now, what they could be doing better, or even presenting new thoughts like, oh, wow, I hadn't even thought that I could do that. Like, you know, when I presented the idea for the first time on TikTok, um, I said, well, when you release music on just like, you know, Apple Music and Spotify, you can't just release it and expect people to stumble upon it. You know, you have to put your music play places to be found and then introducing, you know, the idea of playlisting. And I was surprised how many artists like had never even really given that thought. And they're like, oh, wow, like you have to put your music in front of people. Like that makes sense, you know? So yeah, just getting, presenting new ideas to my audience and presenting encouraging them to critically think about themselves in in a hope that they will change what they're doing and better their track as an artist. That's great. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. And it, there's so many like tidbits in there. Like, you know, the fact, like you said, like I just started on TikTok. I had no idea what I was doing. It goes right. back to, yeah. you mm -hmm. started on GarageBand. You had no idea what you were doing. Mm -hmm. Just start. Yeah, um, and, you know, go back to the Vine days. Just do it. Um, right right yeah <laughs> but yeah you know, that's, that's exactly what it is and um so going off that i guess you know my kind of question is you know going back to like what christian christian said we've talked a lot on like delivering value and, and you've seen the return of delivering value in the sense of growing a you know quote-unquote fan base and so mm. my question for you is have you seen that the value has trans like the value that you're delivering online have you seen it translate offline to like actual in-person connections. Oh, of actually, um, I got recognized, which is funny because, you know, my numbers aren't even particularly crazy. I only have, I think like 2,300 or so, but it's like, you know, they're, they're an attentive or at least a good percentage of them are an attentive 2,300. Like um, they're they interactive and I actually get like DMs. They're like, yo, thank you so much. Or they'll send me music or anything. But I actually got recognized when I was like out to eat. I was ordering food at a restaurant and uh, someone like turned their head. And then, uh, you know, it's COVID, so people were, like, wearing masks and stuff. And then I, I kept ordering. He came up to me. He was like, I knew it was you when I heard your voice, dude. Mundo, like, I love your TikToks. And, like, he had, he went to MTSU apparently as well, but I had never seen him before. It's a large university. It's, like, 20,000 students or so. And uh, it was like, yeah, dude, like, I, I make beats, dude. Like, you're on my For You page all the time. Like, dude, I, you always – thank you, bro. And then um, we exchanged numbers. And then, like, now we have, like, a bit of a connection now. And then also uh, I, I've seen it translate online. Like I said, like, I get, like – a, a good number of dms like probably like one or two a week of artists re like genuine genuinely reaching out and being like yeah I, i'd love your videos dude or maybe they'll ask me like for uh specific advice on like uh their context or something like that uh some used to send me like videos or not videos they would send me their music and then what i would do was i would listen through their music attentively and I, I would like kind of take notes on like the mix and stuff like that. And I'd set up my little iPhone on top of my, my KRK right there. And I'd take like a little four minute blog for them and just like kind of break down like their mix to like my, my best understanding, like helping them, letting them know things that they, because there's, there's a way to give like constructive criticism without being like a dick. And I, I, I try very much to do that yeah. and uh, let them know the things they're doing well, the things they could certainly like improve on. And then also getting into the, like the specific, like, technical like well i think if you start to like high pass your stuff here and here like because i'm noticing mud and like really getting the nitty-gritty and like I i've gotten like a, a lot of very fulfilling responses on that so I i've definitely seen it translate oh yeah and then also into investment in mundo and like uh the things that i'm up to because then you know i start releasing music and some of the people who are interacting with um 
those posts and stuff like that because the followers are starting to trickle over from TikTok to Instagram. People who interact with those posts, I notice come from TikToks. I pay attention to like who, what, where people coming from and stuff like yeah. that. And I have seen a, um, cause you know, it's like 2,300 followers or so. Obviously not all of those individuals are going to be intense Mundo fans. You know what I mean? There's going to be a good percentage who just follow for like some of the advice videos. And not only that, there's probably going to be a percentage within that who only follow for like tips and tricks, percentage who follows for marketing, a percentage who follows for networking. You know what I mean? But then there's also a percentage I notice that are invested now like in Mundo and because of the value that uh, I've, um, what's the word, reciprocated to them. So then they were interested in like the the things that i was doing so yes i i have seen it translate uh across a couple mediums that's awesome mm-hmm. you know that's, that's awesome and that's there's you know so many that's a tip and trick for artists in themselves like you know just because you're a music artist doesn't mean you have to get famous from just doing good music like mm-hmm. there's Look at andrew Paul. To get those people to listen um like i remember one of my one of my buddies we had on one of the first podcasts this uh guy joey Nato um who I've been homies with for years and you know I was with him when he was just starting out I remember he released his first album and you know he went through a course of like four years he's like I just can't break that barrier of getting people to stream and then like his content was there his music was good probably one of the most talented guys um I've seen in you know come out of my state in Connecticut and I followed up with him you know about a year later I was like yo man like how's everything going he's like dude awesome I was like hell yeah. Like what's up? He goes, well, I had the idea to release a YouTube channel and where I just do reactions from a producer about other people's songs. He's like, my YouTube channel blew up. I have like 500,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hell yeah. And he's like, yeah. And then I'm able to push my music through it. Mm -hmm. And now I have a hundred thousand monthly listeners on Spotify. And I was like, hell yeah. And so it's like, Mm -hmm. he couldn't get that to break just through being an artist alone. And he had to add in what is going to be his marketing system that's going to get people into their music. And, um, you know, that's that's the same thing that you're doing with the, you know, tips and tricks. You're like, I'm getting them over here. And you know what? 10% of them may be interested in Mundo, but that's 10% more. And I don't have to go out on Facebook and buy. Right. Uh, I, I love the, um, like the reaction bit because there's, there's like a sense of community that comes from it. There's a, yeah. um, a producer. I love it. He goes by eliminate. And, uh, he just started, he started on YouTube and he just made like, just like funny music productions. Like he did one where he like messed with like an auto tune, like fart or something like that. And then he started live streaming and he did, Oh man, this was genius. So what he'd do is he called it audio combat where basically he would have like a sample of the week. And then he'd set up a two hour timer and then he would like work with the sample, do the best he could like within two hours. But at the end of two hours, meanwhile, while he was working on that, a good chunk of his audience were like messing with the sample too. And so they all send in like the SoundCloud links. And then he like goes through one by one and he plays like everyone's like creation with this like funny sample or weird sample. You know what I mean? And there's like a sense of community in that. And if you pay attention to like the the live chat there, you know, people are like, there's like inside jokes in this community now and people like joking with each other. And like, it, and it, gets, it gets to the point now where on the SoundCloud links for the little image, like they'll have like weird Photoshop pictures of like eliminates face and stuff like that. Maybe on like, I don't know, like Thomas the Train or something, you know, and like just, just like weird stuff like that. And like you growing like a community like that. And now it's not that just, you know, they're not just invested in a song or, or a song or two of his, they're invested in him and his brand and his presence. And that's such a difference when you get a sense of community like that. Yeah. Yeah. There's a huge difference in being invested in a person and a, in a brand. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm with that hundred percent Christian though. I would like to pass it off to you for yeah. the greatest question of all time. Um, <laughs> and, the, and the closing question before I then wrap her up and close her out. This has been so good. I, I've loved this whole conversation. Um, I love to end this thing by asking, and you've given a whole lot of great advice already, but I really want you to hit it home and just give anyone who might be listening your best advice. Uh, Particularly for people who have aspirations in like the music industry, I assume? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Sit down with yourself and like, like write it down, like get a piece of paper and like really give yourself your full attention for a second. And think about like your aspirations and like where you want to go, you know, it's like, okay, well, what have I been doing or what am I doing now? And like maybe list out uh, what types of 
not skill sets like, oh, well, I need to, well, yeah, maybe skill sets, you know, list out the things that you need to be capable of doing or need to be accomplishing in order to get to where you want to go and figure out how you can divide your attention uh, throughout your day, throughout your week, you know, throughout your month and incorporate it in your life so that you begin, you begin making progress towards that goal. So maybe, maybe you want to be a producer, right? Or here, uh, I'll, I'll just like uh, kind of use myself a year ago as an example. It's like, okay, well, you know, I, I can, like, I, I make like electronic music. I don't have like a particular vocal talent. So it would be useful to connect with some singers and some rappers and people who can fill that hole. Cause it's, it's kind of like, uh, like having a jigsaw puzzle, actually. I'll make up like an analogy now. Like you got a jigsaw puzzle of like 12 pieces and every piece is like the things you need to do. So marketing, you know, the production, mixing, uh, maybe brand identity, you know, it's like, okay, well, maybe you can take care of like five of those pieces, but now you got seven more that you don't have the skill set or the time to do. So, you know, find the people to do that or divide your attention so that it's like, all right, well, I need to get better at networking, but I have problem with like my self-confidence and like people skills. So let me hone in on that first. It's like, okay, what can I do for my self-confidence and like my people skills? And like, how can I practice that? And how can I improve that? And set a precise goal and timeline. And it's like, all right, well, in this week, I want to get better at this and like really lay it out for yourself and give yourself your full attention and get serious about it. Because just kind of having like your music stuff fluidly in the back of your life while you're going about your nine to five or whatever in the world you're up to, you know, like I, I, I worry that it's very likely you will not fulfill your aspirations with it just fluidly in the background like that. But if you really incorporate it in your life and give it attention for maybe an hour or two and figure out a schedule or a calendar, or what works for you in your context and what you need to do, I think it's more likely that you'll reach your goals. That's great. I love that. Yeah. You can't figure out a jigsaw puzzle if you don't look at it. Right. <laughs> yeah. And if only there was a platform out there in the world that could help you with that jigsaw puzzle. Hmm. If only. Well, on that note, <laughs> I guess that's where we'll wrap it up. If anybody can come up with a platform that does that, please let me know. <laughs> yeah. um, with that, Mundo, thank you so much for hopping on. It was awesome. Um, you know, getting inside your mind and seeing your perspective on all of this. Um, I know we'll be in touch. I know we'll be working together for years to come through Artist Public. And um, yeah, man, you know, once again, thank you for hopping on. And if anybody needs tips, tips and tricks, obviously find them on TikTok, find them on everything. We'll put all the links in the description. And with that, don't forget us to give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts so we can continue to do this. And we'll see you all next week.